You heard that right. I got rejected from medical school four times. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Cynthia. If you are new here, my name is Cynthia. I am currently a core surgical trainee in London. I'm in my second year of core surgical training with an interest in orthopedics. If you're new, please subscribe. I would absolutely, absolutely love to have you. And I promise you, you will not regret it. So today, what I want to talk about is getting rejected from medical school four times. Yes, I got rejected from medical school four times. And this video is all about the UK medical school application system, how to make the most of it, and my personal story in getting into medical school. So if we take it all the way back to 2007, that's when I did my GCSEs and I got my GCSE results. I did 12 GCSEs and I got six A stars, four A's and two B's. And the two B's were in sports, PE, and music. So I wasn't too worried. Now, I stayed on in my school for sixth form. And I did four A-levels at sixth form. I did maths, biology, chemistry, and sociology. And the reason I chose to do four full A-levels was that I did quite well in my AS levels. So I didn't need to do as well in my A2 to get A's overall. So I was the model student. I was head girl at one point. I was always a prefect. I always did quite well in school. I did work experience. So I knew that I wanted to be a doctor. So I applied just like everyone else. Now in the UK, you have four medical schools that you can apply to. You've got four options that you can apply to, and then you can apply to a fifth course as your insurance. So I applied to four medical schools. I applied to Cambridge, I applied to Leicester, I applied to Bristol, and I applied to Southampton. So I wrote my personal statement and I thought, yes, I'm a shoo There is no reason why I shouldn't get in. So I send off my application, then I do the aptitude tests. In the UK, there are three aptitude tests for medical school. And the three aptitude tests are the UK CAT, which most medical schools use. Then you have the BMAT, which some medical schools use, such as Cambridge, Oxford and Imperial College. And the third one is the GAMSAT, which is for graduate entry medicine, which didn't apply to me. But if you are doing graduate entry medicine, then that would be the aptitude test that you are going to take. So I prepared for my aptitude test. I had to do both because I was applying to Cambridge. So I practiced for the BMAT and I also practiced for the UK CAT. Unfortunately, I didn't actually do very well in my BMAT, but I did quite well in my UK CAT. I got well over 600, so I was quite happy with my scores. So the waiting game started for interviews. I was waiting to be called for interviews because in the UK, you cannot get into medical school unless you are first interviewed. And I waited. And I waited. And I waited some more. And my first rejection letter without interview was from Cambridge. You know, it's that usual where we regret to inform you that you've not been successful. I thought, OK, cool. And I got another rejection letter. It was from Leicester. Then I got a third rejection letter and a fourth rejection letter. And guys, I could not believe it that I'd managed to get rejected from all four medical schools that I applied to without even giving the opportunity to even have an interview. I cried and cried and cried. My poor mom had to watch me completely break down at 17 because I honestly thought that that was it, that my medical career was over before it even started. So fast forward to A-level results day in 2009, I came out with four A-level. I was predicted four A, so I thought, OK, maybe some medical schools will have some spaces through clearing. So I started calling around 
And unfortunately, unsurprisingly, there were no spaces left available through clearing. So I didn't have a place to go for university that year. I was actually happy to take a gap year, but because I have Nigerian parents, they would not let me take a gap year. So what I did was that I agreed to go to the University of Leicester for medical biochemistry. Now, the reason I did this was that Leicester had essentially given quite a lot of students hope in the sense that they they basically said at the time, if you do this medical biochemistry degree and start it with us, there is going to be an opportunity at the end of the year for some students who perform very well to move on to medicine and to progress on to medicine. So that's what I did. I thought, okay, I can go to Leicester, I can do really well in my first year and then progress on to medicine. What I didn't know was that when I got to Leicester, there was medical biochemistry, there was medical genetics, there was medical microbiology, you name it, there was a medicine affiliated degree. And there were about 200 students. And the second thing I found out was that there were only actually three to four places per year. So at that point, my chances of moving on to medicine was actually very, very slim. So I thought, well, I don't want to get stuck in this degree. And my friend encouraged me at the time to just reapply for medicine that year. The deadline was about two weeks away because this was in October. So I just thought, okay, fine, let me just reapply for medicine. And that's exactly what I did. So whilst I was in Leicester doing this medical biochemistry degree, I reapplied for medicine. And on my second go, I reapplied for East Anglia, Hull York, Birmingham and Bristol. So those were my new four choices for medical school. I then decided to really put an effort into my personal statement because the reason I probably didn't get in the first time without an interview was that my personal statement was dull. So what I did was that I got the personal statements of other successful applicants and I read through them and saw exactly why they got in. So I managed to rewrite my personal statement in a way that would be appealing to selectors at universities for medical school. I redid the UK CAT practiced for it again. On the second go, I didn't need to do the BMAT. I read through my personal statement on so many occasions. I got so many people to look at it and I made sure that it made me stand out. What I didn't want to do was repeat my first mistakes of having quite a generic personal statement that was dull and literally looked like something that had been lifted off Google. So on my second application, I was invited for interview for Hull York and I got in. I was interviewed for University of East Anglia in Norwich and I got in. I was unfortunately rejected from Bristol and unfortunately I can't remember the fourth university now. But yes, I got into Hull York and I got into East Anglia. I chose to go to East Anglia, one, because I was familiar with it. My sister had gone to East Anglia and I'd been to the university multiple times and I went to visit her. And number two, my sister was actually living in Norwich at the time. So that familiarity played a big role in me choosing to go to East Anglia. Now, the reason I've made this video is that I know that there will be a lot of people applying to medicine and there will be a lot of people who also don't get in because it is still quite a competitive degree to get onto. And rejection is a part of life. I got rejected from four medical schools and now I'm in a surgical training program in London that was very, very competitive to get into. Rejection is a part of life. You just cannot give up. So I have four tips in getting into medical school in the UK. Number one is your personal statement. You have to make your personal statement stand out. You need to remember that everyone else who is applying for medicine are essentially going to be in the same boat as you. They're going to have similar grades. They're going to be similar high achievers. So the grades are all going to be the same. What's going to differentiate you from the next person is your personal statement and you have to make it true to you. You have to make it true to yourself and you have to make sure that you stand out on that personal statement. Number two is the interview. Now, if you are lucky enough to be selected for the interview, you have to treat 
that interview like it is life or death. You have to prepare for that interview. You need to do your research, do your homework. And for each university that you get called for interview, you have to do your research on that university, know exactly why you want to go there, know their teaching style, and also read up on medical legal things like medical ethics, medical law, and just generic things that medical schools are likely to ask you at interview. There are plenty of courses. I didn't go on any course on my first or my second time applying, but there are plenty of courses out there if that sort of thing is for you. But the be all and end all is that you have to do your homework. Number three, prepare for the aptitude tests. You need to prepare for the aptitude test. I know there are aptitude tests and sometimes people say you can't prepare for them. I think that's completely false because even later on in your career in medicine, there are going to be other tests that people say, oh, you can't prepare for them. But that's a lie. You can definitely prepare for these things. So you have to do the preparation. There are plenty of courses out there for the UK CAT. There are plenty of courses out there for the BMA and as well as the GAMSAT. But you have to prepare for the aptitude test. And number four, the final thing is know why you are applying for medicine and never give up. Even if you don't get in, there's always graduate entry. Loads of people get in through different ways. And my story proves that if you don't get in the first time, the one thing that you absolutely cannot do is give up on your dreams. If being a doctor is what you've always dreamed about, don't give up. So if you're applying to medicine this year, I just want to say good luck. I am happy to answer any questions. And thank you so much for watching my video. I will see you on the next one. Bye.